stop video. There we go. Okay, so as you see with um, with next year's work, with the grade 12 work, we are going to be focusing uh, a lot on past papers. So everything that you're going to do is going to go from past papers. And all of these questions that you see in this worksheet that I gave you guys last week is on past paper questions. It's important for us to see how the questions are asked and then how they are reasoning to get the answer and what the answers and how we need to give the answers through. And so that's why it's important that we focus a lot on past papers. Also, um, when, when we take a look at past papers, I just want you to note the following. Remember I told you guys that the grade 12, the way that they are approaching grade 12 from next year on in CAPS is changing. And because that is changing, uh, there's quite a few changes within the paper. So topics that you, the topics are mixed up. The topics that are so far in paper one and so far in paper two are being shuffled around a little bit. And so please be aware, and I'll post a new, um, uh, in the beginning of next year, I'll post what goes into which paper, because I don't want to post it now, then I'm going to confuse the grade 12s because some of them are still looking at their Google Classroom. And so it is very important for you to know that um, there is going to be a change in what is going to be in paper one, what is going to be in paper two. And there's, there's a very important change. I will on, almost want to say a sad change that is happening that I want you guys to note. And I want you to hear me now. Because so far we thought that human impact was still going to be in the metric paper. It is taken out. You will not do human impact in grade 12 papers anymore. It's completely, completely removed, which is actually, it's sad in one sense, but it's good in the other sense that you have a lot less to study for your grade 12 papers. So you can study harder on the sections that remain behind. And I don't think we're gonna struggle then to get through at the end of the year to get through evolution and human evolution like we usually do, because we don't have to worry about recapping on human impact. Okay. Let's go through DNA, DNA replication, and protein synthesis in this paper, the questions. I'm going to go through question by question, and I'm going to explain the reasoning behind each question. 1.1. DNA is tightly wound around a protein known as a histone. So that's a simple, that is a very simple question. Straightforward question. You need to know what a histone is. It's a terminology question. They might have as well have asked this in the terminology questions. Then, 1.2, the sugar molecule present in RNA, and it gets, the R is the trick. RNA is a ribose sugar. Remember, RNA is ribose nucleic acid, as opposed to DNA, which is deoxy ribose nucleic acid. So the R gives this one away. It's ribose, the sugar. Now remember, each nucleotide consists out of three components. It consists out of a phosphate, a pentose sugar, the pentose sugar, which is in this case ribose, and then of course a nitrogenous base, which in the case of DNA would be adenine, thymine, uh, guanine, and cytosine. In the case of RNA, adenine, Iracil, guanine, and cytosine. Then let's go on to 1.3. The difference between a nucleic acid and a nucleotide is that. Now, you a nucleic acid is DNA or RNA, and it's a polymer. It consists out of a monomer, which is a nucleotide. So nucleotides are the building blocks of nucleic acids, just like Greeks 
are the building blocks of a house. So let's go through this then. First option, nucleic acids are the building blocks of nucleotides. No, they're saying the house makes up the brick. That's not it. The second one says nucleotides are larger than nucleic acids. And that's also not right because then they're saying to you that the brick is larger than the house. That can't be right. Then the third option says nucleic acids are found in the nucleus and nucleotides are found in the cytoplasm. No, no. We find both nucleotides and nucleic acids in both the cytoplasm and inside the nucleus, depending on whether we're talking about DNA or RNA, but you have to find them in the same place. You can't find the bricks in Pretoria, but you have the house in Johannesburg. Then the last one says, nucleotides, the bricks, are the building blocks of nucleic acids, the house. Yes. So D is the correct answer for that one. Let's go on to 1.5, sorry, 1.4. Select one correct answer between DNA and RNA molecule. And they specifically say, yeah, the other differences and the trick in this question is noticing that we're talking about differences are all incorrect so there might be some correct things inside here but are they a difference between dna or rna let's take a look a says dna is a ribose sugar and i know it's not a ribose sugar it's a deoxy ribose sugar okay so i immediately Eliminate A. Let's go to B. DNA is a double helix strand, while RNA is a single strand. Yes, that is correct. That is always the case. But I want to make sure. So let's go on to C. DNA says it contains thymine, and DNA contains thymine. No problem. RNA contains adenine. Yes, RNA does contain adenine. But is that a difference between DNA and RNA? No, it is not. The only difference in the nitrogenous basis between DNA and RNA is thymine changes into uracil in RNA, not adenine, uracil. So if it said over here that it contains uracil, that, that would have been a correct difference, but it doesn't, did it? It said it contains adenine, so it's not a correct difference. Let's go on to the last one. DNA contains codons. No, DNA does not contain codons. It contains a triplet base. Triplet base. And mRNA contains codons. tRNA contains anticodons. So there's, there's that's quite a few problems with that statement over there. So our correct answer for this one was B. DNA is a double helix strand and then rna is a single strand let's go on to 1.5 remember it's very important for us to to know that not just what the answer is but how they got to the answer what was the reasoning because you need to know the reasoning because they're not going to ask the question precisely like it is here they're going to twist around the words to make it sound different for the same type of question. Let's go on to 1.5. Study the following list of molecules. There's a sugar, a phosphate, a nitrogenous base, and an amino acid. And I already see there's something wrong here. This one kind of doesn't belong. All three of these are part of a nucleotide. So which one of the following combinations represents the components of a nucleotide? So exactly as I thought. They're going to ask what's a nucleotide. So that's one, two, and three. So the correct answer is B only. B only. Let's go on to the... Sorry, I'm just waiting for my computer to catch a wake-up so it can go on to the next question. Let's go on to the terminology questions. Give the correct biological term for each of the following descriptions. Write only the term next to the question number in your answer book. Who discovered the double helical strand of DNA in X-ray pictures, from X-ray pictures? 
Now be careful here because you've got three, four role players over here. Rosalind Franklin, it was her x-ray picture, but she never made the discovery. Watson and Crick did. They made the discovery after looking at her pictures. Bonds between complementary nitrogenous bases are always hydrogen or weak hydrogen bonds. The type of DNA that is used to reconstruct evolutionary relationships amongst organisms is mitochondrial DNA. Remember, the nucleus is not the only one that contains DNA. Mitochondria also contains DNA in animal cells. Monomers are building blocks of a nucleic acid. We already discussed this in the multiple choice questions. That's a nucleotide. Type of RNA that picks up and carries amino acids is a tRNA or transfer RNA. Transfer, it transfers the, the amino acids from the cytoplasm to the ribosome. The triplet of bases found on the tRNA molecule. So on the DNA, it is a triplet base. On the mRNA, it's a codon. On the tRNA, it's an anticodon. Segment of a chromosome that controls each characteristic is called a gene. A gene, G-E-N-E. -E. Not a blue gene, not a denim gene, a gene on the DNA, G-E-N-E. -E. You've got to spell that one correctly. You've got to spell all of these correctly. But be very careful of that one in any question because if you spell gene incorrectly, it changes the meaning of the word and then it will be marked incorrectly. Enzyme responsible for transcription of mRNA from DNA. That's polymerase, RNA polymerase. Ensures that the two daughter cells formed at the end of cell division contains the same identical and the same amount of DNA as the parent cell. That's before meiosis happens. And that's for replication, DNA replication. The number of DNA molecules in one chromosome, be careful of this one. This is a tricky question, there's one. In each chromosome, there's only one DNA molecule. It's a long string of DNA that is curled up to form a, a shape, or the typical chromosome shape, okay? So be careful of that one. There's one DNA molecule in every chromosome. Study the following questions. Let me just wipe out some of this scratching I did over here. Study the following diagram and answer the questions that follow. Identify parts B, D, and E. Okay, so B, on the position that B is, I know it's my nitrogenous base. That's my nitrogenous base. Nitrogenous base is B. Then D, take a look at the shape. Oh, that's a sugar, that's a sugar. In this case, it's a deoxyribose sugar because this is DNA. For a pento sugar, I will also mark that correctly. And then E, it bonds the nitrogenous bases together. So it's a hydrogen bond. Give the letters in sequence that will make up one nucleotide. So you're gonna either say C, A, B, or B, A, C, C, A, B, or B, A, C. The sequence of the bases could sometimes change. What is this change in sequence called? We haven't discussed that in detail yet, but it's called a mutation, mutation. And we'll get to mutations in more detail later in this section of work. What type of molecule does the bath diagram represent? Provide a reason for your answer that is visible in the diagram. So I can't say, no, this is DNA because it contains thymine, because I don't see a thymine. It never labeled any thymine. B is a thymine, but I can't say it's thymine. Um, or I can say B is thymine, but I can't use it because it's visible, because it's not visible on the diagram. So what can I say? I can say this is a double helix. It's got two sides. It's got two sides. I have the pen here and my pen. There are two sides, two strings, two strands. So that is a DNA because it's double stranded. Okay, let's move on to the next question. 
The diagram below represents a part of the process of protein synthesis, and this is a typical shape of a ribosome. And because it's a ribosome, I know that I am busy, sorry, I'm busy with translation. Remember, transcription, the script before translating, translation, translation on the ribosome. Name the part stage of protein synthesis that is illustrated in the diagram above. It is translation. Name the organelle name W. W is my ribosome. The table below shows the base strips of mRNA that correspond to the different amino acids. So this is a codon table because I'm busy with mRNA, codon table. Okay, then with reference to the diagram in the table above, name the amino acid labeled X. Let's take a look at where, oops, let me just, my screen just went away for a second. Okay, so <laughs> let's take a look at X. Okay, X is UAA. I want to know, and but now be careful. It's UAA on what? It's UAA on the tRNA. Okay, and on the tRNA, it's the anticodon. Anticodon. So I need to go and take a look at what is the complementary of UAA. So the complementary of UAA, U will change into A, A will change into U, and then a will change into U. So I'm looking for AUU, and so it's going to give me isoleucine. Isoleucine as an amino acid. Because this is on the tRNA, this is your anticodon, this is on your mRNA, this is on your codon, and this is a codon table. State the base sequence of the molecule labeled Y. The base sequence of the molecule labeled Y. Let's take a look. Y. Okay, so G U C G U C is going to then bond complementary. So G U C will change G changes to C. U to A and then C to G. C A G. C A G will be the base sequence of Y. Actually, the name is given to the triplet of mRNA bases that correspond to each amino acid. It's a codon. Codon. How would the composition of the protein molecule change if the base sequence at Z was CGA instead of C -G uh, GCU? Okay, so let's take a look. So at Z, it was GCU. Okay, so it was GCU. So initially, it would have given you alanine. And now it changes to CGA, and CGA is the organine. So we're going to change alanine to organine. Organine, that's a big mutation there. Use the information in the table to write the DNA base sequence that would correspond with the amino acid histidine. So I want to know what's on the DNA base sequence. That correlates with histidine. So histidine is CAU on the codon. So complementary on the base triplet is C will change to G. I will change to G because now we're on the DNA. And U will change to A. G, T, A. Study the diagram below in which the following DNA profiles or genetic fingerprints are of um, uh, blood of the right victim is found. The blood of three suspects and the semen found on the female victim. Which suspect is the most likely to rape us? So we've got to take a look at matching, the matching bands that we find here. So if I pull this, this matches with the victim, but it also matches with suspect number three. 
Second band matches with the victim, but also with suspect number three. Third one matches with suspect number three. And this one matches suspect three, that one matches suspect three. I think it's quite obvious that the, uh, that suspect three is, is the, the writer. Explain your answering question 4.1.1. The bands on the DNA fingerprint match. The DNA matches. The one reason why this evidence may be considered reliable, each person except for twins, identical twins, has their own unique DNA profile. And so the DNA profile can only belong to one person unless it's twins. Um, and then give two reasons why this evidence is may be considered to be not reliable. Uh, the reason why it's not reliable could not be reliable is again, if, if there's a twin to somebody. Also, another thing that I might find is that there might be um, problems happening in the lab, uh, samples being swapped. Another issue that we can find is that um, that there's some wrong processes. Uh, the, the DNA. What we also find is in a lot of cases uh, that DNA um, that is found at the crime scene might be fragmented. So you have a very short strand of DNA, so you don't get a nice long string um, to actually make your DNA profile from. Now, two benefits of DNA profiling other than solving crimes, finding relatives, proving paternity, finding lost people, um, or identifying lost people as family, um, and identifying genetic diseases. Okay, my computer is just a bit slow today. Apologies for that. Just give it a moment. There we go. Last question, question five. The following sequence of diagrams shows the process of protein synthesis. Provide a brief explanation for each step um, A, B, C, and D. Begin with step A and end with step B. Okay, so let's take a look at what happens during, and this is part of an essay question. Um, so A is transcription. DNA unwinds and unzips. One DNA strand is used as a template and loose mRNA nucleotides complementary pair up with the DNA strand to form an mRNA string. The mRNA string will then leave the nucleus and go to the ribosome. Now we're going to go to B. The tRNA with its anticodons and amino acids it picks up from the cytoplasm is going to go to the ribosome and complementary, the anticodon which is complementary to the codon will then match up with the codons on the mRNA, where C matches to G and A matches to U and vice versa. And that's B. Then from C, what happens is that the amino acids bond with a peptide bond, they bond with a peptide bond, and the RNA leaves to go fetch more amino acids uh, the peptide bond will in eventually form the peptide bond. So the, my peptides, my amino acids, will eventually form a polypeptide chain, which, when it leaves, is going to fold into a three-dimensional shape and form a protein. And that's our paper. That is the full paper. That's the worksheet you had to do. Okay. Um, questions. Um, you can put your questions into the chat. You're also welcome to ask me on the WhatsApp group or send me a personal message asking questions. Aaron, just, um, I see there's two metrics on you. Thank you for joining us. Just what I said at the beginning of the lesson, please be careful. For you guys, you're still doing human impact, but for next year's group, they're not going to do human impact as part of paper one anymore. And their topics are going to be different in each paper. But you guys, you, you keep the standard quo as uh, status, so stand, status quo for this year. It stays the same. So and, that's unfair. 
<laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> life is sometimes unfair, Erin, and I'm very sorry about that. But yeah, they're also taking out the essay question from them. They're never going to have essay questions either. They're so lucky. <laughs> I hope, Tabu, I hope you hear that. <laughs> okay, so um, thank you guys. If you have any questions, please um, drop me a message and I will try and help and discuss it in the next lesson or just give you a comment back um, and help you out. Study hard, good luck for your tests, good luck for your exams, great pals. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>